Tada! Thickness planer, AYC Alaska Yellow Cedar, and a laminating jig. That's the plan for today. We are back and we have our planks cut to size. Last week we selected, mapped out and cut the lumber that we need to make our new deck beams. And now combined with the laminating jig that we made in episode 14, we have everything we need to make our first real deck beam. We've made a few test beams already with scrap wood we had lying around, but this is now the real deal. Our first beam done with our precious supply of Alaska yellow cedar. With lumber in short supply, messing up wasn't really an option. We had to proceed carefully. But what is not quite correct yet is the thickness of each of these strips. We are gluing four together. The end result has to be three inches. So I have to get each one of them down to three quarter now. They're not quite there yet. So that's the next step. Oh, glorious planing. You've already seen lots of footage of this machine in the last episode, but here's some more, just in case you were really missing it. So the planer has a pretty cool indicator here of how much uh, thickness you're taking off. And as I insert the plank, uh, it engages right in the beginning. And now it's showing me that it's set at taking off 132nd. And that's exactly what I want. And also it has two different speeds. The slower it feeds through, the more cuts are being made on the wood and the result is much, much, much nicer. I am debating if I want to do that or not, but I think I don't because I'm gluing them and for gluing I want, on microscopic scale, I want a bit of rougher surface. Imagine if we had to do all this planing by hand. This is a pretty stark example of just how much easier life gets when you've got the right tools. We felt pretty lucky to be able to stand by idly, feeding wood through the planer and having it emerge on the other side perfectly planed and ready to go. Even with the planer, it was still a lengthy process. Each board required several passes before they measured the required three-quarter inch thickness. Very cool machine. Uh, nice, I think we got it. Perfect. And exactly three inches. The next step was to glue the beam together using epoxy. 
Epoxy is always comprised of two components, the resin and the hardener. When mixed together, the hardener causes the resin to cure. So the kit that you get for the pumps, there is three pumps in a kit because one, the big one is for the resin, but there is two different ones for the hardener and that is because there is four different hardeners for West System and two have the same ratio, five to one, and the two other hardeners have another ratio of three to one. In order to cure properly, the hardener and the resin have to be mixed together in very specific ratios. West System sells measured pumps to help you get the ratios right. So I was looking like which one is which, but they've made it pretty cleverly as the caps are different and the lengths. So this one can only go with this one, then instead this hardener, which I don't have right now, would not fit anyway, so you cannot go wrong. Oh, cool. that's smart. Different hardeners can be used to achieve different results. Right now we're using a slow hardener since we want lots of time before it cures. When you start off with these, uh, you want to prime them with epoxy to get a full pump. So yeah, I'm going about this slowly. I want to have time on the first application. We might turn the fast one later on, but we have all the time in the world right now. So is that waste just to prime the pump? Yeah. Oh no. All right, well I start mixing epoxy. And first I just add some uh, wet epoxy, well just without additives. And once I've wetted out every side, that needs it, then I will mix in a little bit of wood flour. What's this? Some Alaska yellow cedar that we got from the cuts we made yesterday. And that's what I will use uh, to color the epoxy slightly. This is something I've heard probably as many times as to brush your teeth after eating and it is mix epoxy really really well. Take your time. Oh, hey, just like with the teeth. Ha, oh, funny. <laughs> Analogy. <laughs> and everywhere. Scrub the sides, scrub the bottom, turn and flip and yeah, you get the drill. So the idea behind this initial wet out is, of course, so the wood gets wetted out. Makes sense. But also as I'm doing it and I continue to each plank, the wood hopefully absorbs a tiny amount so that it's not just a surface adhesion. After wetting out the wood with liquid epoxy, we mixed some more epoxy, this time adding some sawdust for color and some West System 403 filler for structure. When applied like this, epoxy is actually stronger than wood, so the wood itself will splinter before the epoxy seams break open. Aladino and I have always sat on the edge between the traditional and the modern. We love and appreciate traditional designs and methodologies, but are also quite happy to embrace modern technologies where necessary. 
Epoxy represents a huge step forward for wooden boat construction as it can stabilize and protect it from water intrusion. Not only will our beams be sandwiched together with epoxy, but before installation we will also coat the exterior of the beams with finishing epoxy. Combined with rebuilding the decks and bulwarks in such a way as to prevent any chance for water to intrude at all, we do think that our boat will hold up quite well in the test of time. Of course, nothing lasts forever, and everything requires a certain degree of maintenance and inspection. But there are steps to take to achieve greater longevity, and we're trying to take all of those steps now. Now there's four on top of each other. Mm -hmm. And now we have a beam. Yeah, tomorrow maybe. And then we put it on the jig and we clamp it down. Yeah. And then we really have a beam. One thing that many do is they wrap them and that is to contain and squeeze in all the epoxies, but I prefer after clamping it down to actually wipe excess off. It was actually the first job I ever had to do. When I was looking for a place to do the apprenticeship at, I went to work in different places. Well, work. I just went there for a week, um, kind of to see, do I like the place, do they like me? And the first job I ever had to do at a boat yard in Germany was cleaning the epoxy off of beams that they just laminated. Oh, really? Yeah. That was Germany, not Switzerland? That was Germany. Oh. Epoxy doesn't stick to plastic, which is why we laid a plastic sheet down on top of the jig. We also used wooden blocks with duct tape on one side as cushions for the clamps. Since the duct tape is plastic, epoxy won't stick to it. the clamps I usually start in the middle and then I work my way out and now I cannot do a beautifully symmetric job and putting a clamp at every interval that was planned with the holes uh, that is because I have some ordered but you know the story everything is coming a bit later well yeah we don't have all During the clamps we COVID. would like right now yeah. but this will do and also, you don't want all of the epoxy to squeeze out of there, so don't like tighten them with two hands. I mean, there still is tons of squeeze out and it seems like I'm tightening them a lot, but you do want some epoxy in there. So? Almost done. And after this, I will throw another plastic uh, sheets on and I will place a little electric heater here. Epoxy is a friend of heat. Uh, so the warmer you can get it in there, the better it cures. So I'll do that. We just leave it here overnight. So as the night hummed along beneath the light of a luminous moon, our project silently cured, preparing for the next day ahead. Ready to unwrap? Ready. 
The heater was on till 11 before I went to bed. And I just turned it on now again to have warm fingers as we unwrap. <laughs> I mean, it looks great. I think the only thing that we could, I mean, assuming it fits, but the only thing that needs to be a bit better is we need more clamps, but those are yeah. still supposed to be arriving. Clean up what we have to do. <laughs> Look at all the little epoxies clinging on for dear life. <laughs> they better be. <laughs> oh man, there's a lot, hey? Mm -hmm. This looks like a modern art project now. This is what I was talking of my first job. Was exactly this present they presented me with this and they said clean up. Was it fun? Heat gun and scraper, you know the drill. Heat gun, really? Yeah. Is that what we're doing again? I think so. When you are close to the dimensions, then that is the most careful and precise way you can do it. Okay. This is oddly satisfying. There is also a story behind this particular saw. This was given to us by a patron, Arnie, and this saw has quite a history. It was uh, his father's saw. His father worked in the trades his whole life, and this was his working saw. It's apparently been sharpened so many times that it's basically an inch shorter, more or less, from where it was when original. So it's pretty cool that he gave this to us to sort of continue its working life here in the boatyard. It's really nice to have tools that have this story and this history of use behind them, and especially when they're given to you with intention and with, um, with, with good wishes. So thank you, Arnie, for this saw. It's very special that we can have it in the workshop, and it's already seen several uses. The beam is ready to go. I've also planed it to the exact thickness that we need. It's one and a half inch wide now. Now we just have to add the cuts and I am getting a bit tired, but there's so much excitement in the air. Now that we have this beam, uh, we do wanna have one test fit. So I took out the test beam that I made. So since that one is prepped and ready to go, and I can recreate it by measuring the angles here and transfer them onto this beam, um, I think it might be a quick one. Filmmakers also safe.
so this will be the bulwark end that I cut off now and this one is the one that goes into the carlin. looks pretty close to me. Lightweight and strong. This is the big moment of truth. I'm tired. Yeah, it's not um, perfect, but now it went into place. The arc is perfect. And well, the only thing is uh, the Carlin gets damaged a little bit when we get the old one out and the gap becomes a little bigger where it's notched into the Carlin, but I mean, it's stuff of one millimeter. And once it's bullnosed, this will look really pretty. But yeah, come have a look. It's really nice. Okay, one sec. I'm just admiring this. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. I'm glad we're doing this in the end. I think it's probably a good time to call it end. To call it the end for now. And we will be back next Friday with another episode probably with some more deck beam adventures. And uh, thank you so much for watching. We are very, very happy we get to produce these episodes for you. It's a ton of fun. I love making them. Aladino loves working on the boat and uh, we're just happy campers over here. If you can give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, leave a comment letting us know what you thought. All of that helps out the search algorithm, the great holy search algorithm uh, and that's really really great if you guys do that extra big thanks to our patrons for making all these episodes possible and an extra extra big thanks to these folks whose names are now magically appearing on screen for always going above and beyond for uh, to make sure that magic carpet keeps being produced and we will see you all next Friday mm -hmm.